be be uncertain as to whether or not we're live. So it's not <laughs> anything new to the audience of me to be, be talking like like I am right now, making sure that we're we're on because uh, I, yeah. I have yeah. I have some. I have some grasp of technology, but I struggle with other. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, because every time I'm on one of these things and then they stop and I don't realize it stopped and then everyone's like, it stopped. I'm like, but this video is still going. So, yeah. You know, so I'm like, you know, we'll do it live then. <laughs> we'll do it live. All right, we are live. Okay, we'll do it live then. We are live. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Here. I have, I have yeah. some. I have some grasp of technology, but I struggle. Oh, well, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, we're here today with uh, Mike Matalala Odom, who is a professor of Black Studies in the San Diego area. Uh, we're here today to talk about. Um, we're here to talk about what's going on in the world and what's going on in the in the U.S. Uh, as it pertains to uh, the COVID virus, as well as as it's you know particularly. Uh, you know the disproportionate effect we're seeing on Africans in the United States, and how and how um, lives are being lost, and how um, you know, people are going through people are going through some some hell. So, um, you know, let's just let's just get right into it. Um, you know, what are what are the conditions our our audience should be aware of uh, that are that Africans are being disproportionately affected um, um, by this crisis? Uh, yeah, um, it's it's. Uh... I mean, it's it's complicated issue because here in San Diego, uh, as of Friday, no Africans have died from COVID nineteen. Then you got some cities where the rate is seventy percent, hundred percent. I think uh, Michigan uh, blacks make up probably like forty percent of the people died, but like less than fifteen percent of the population. Um, so, so I mean, it's 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 uh, but but overall, I mean, the position is that uh, Africans are 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 disproportionately affected uh, by the COVID nineteen virus and crisis uh, because of the fact that uh, because of colonialism, right? So I know we'll get into it, but I'm a member of the Uru movement, a, a leader in what's called the, the organization in Pedum, and and what we say is the Coronavirus is a colonial virus. Um, I think that's crucial because uh, you know too much of the conversation. If you turn and tune in the CNN, MSNBC stuff like that, is going to be about uh, that. Oh, you know the colonial virus. I mean the colonial virus is killing black folks because black folks got bad diets or something like that. But if that was the over-determining factor, then you'd see the same numbers everywhere black folks live in the U.S. Um, you know, so, so I mean, and then where do those factors come from, right? Those factors come from the conditions that you force people to live under. But I know that like, you know, general liberals in the United States, they always wanna make excuses for the structures of power and structures of colonialism by saying things like, well, well, I can't we, you know, can it be two things at the same time? Can't we sort of have two arguments and two arguments be true? They always want two arguments to be true. No, right? It, it's always colonialism, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, like, like, uh, I mean, when we know that, like, white folks that live in the exact same cities as as Africans that have the exact same culinary traditions as Africans in the South and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, then, then, then it to me it's something else. So uh, I just wrote an article about this, and hopefully it'll be published soon. When it is, I'll share it on your page. Um, uh, it's called "Parasitic Capitalism Is the Is the Conspiracy," and in it, I knock out a whole bunch of different uh, conspiracy theories that's floating around. But the biggest one, like I said, is the is the liberal one that, that, that in which people argue that pre-existing conditions is the reason why black folks are dying at a high rate. Uh, uh, and, and I disagree with that. To me, it's the sort of the pre-existing condition is colonialism, is, 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 is parasitic capitalism, um, which has uh, placed a lower surplus value uh, on uh, African lives, especially in these post-industrial uh, urban centers in the United States. Um, so, 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 so we can think about things. We think about the fact that uh, black folks make only 
about 12% of the essential workforce in the United States, but uh, well over like a, about a third of the essential workers that are like in the in, in the line of fire. You know, they make up as much as a third of the of the transportation workers throughout the United States, a third of the people working in uh, home health care, like a third of the people working as nurses, LVNs, lower level hospital staff, things like that, right? I mean, I know for ever since ever since Jim Crow, uh, uh, becoming a nurse has been uh, a, 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 a popular occupation for African women in the United States and internationally. And when you think about a lot of the African women that are dying, um, it's it's been um, people who are nurses and things like that. So 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 those are the conditions. I mean, of course, they say things like, hey, "Hold on one second, man. Hold on one second. But yeah, um, uh, so but but yeah, I mean, a, a very 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 clear. They say things like you know hypertension or or being diabetic or or other things. But I mean, the the, the age rate of people that are dying that are black are are are, are tend to be younger. Um, you know, people with. Uh, uh, generally good health care things like that are, are dying uh from from exposure and stuff like that um uh, uh, uh clearly black folks own less cars black folks are more likely to take um uh, 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 public transportation uh, uh the places where you see these high rates of death uh the population density is twice that of of, of like places like Los Angeles and California and San Diego. And if you live in the hood in, San, in, in Los Angeles or San Diego, you already feel like people living on top of you. But if you're living in Brooklyn, Detroit, uh, uh, places like that. And then when you think about the overall structure of segregation uh, within the United States, um, you know, uh, they saying social distancing, but don't nobody social distance better than, uh, than, 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 than than, than rich white folks in America, you know, uh, 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 you know, shoot, it, it don't take nothing for them to roll up the window and, and <laughs> lock the door. So, 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 I mean, you, like, like, I mean, but think about this literally, right? You know, uh, uh, so, so they get off work, they hop in that car, they go drive to where they live, it, you know, uh, 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 they got a drive-in garage. So they drive into their garage and then they go home and they've got people doing work for them at work. You know, uh, uh, the, the amount of people that they've touched that have been in their faces been very, very small, right? Uh, so, so yeah, so I mean, that's part of the thing too, you know, even when the city shut down, uh, uh, so many black folks are essential work, so many black folks have to travel. You know, I live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a diverse but cool part of San Diego um, but there's still only two grocery stores in a place uh, that has like probably about 20,000 people in Spring Valley, uh, sort of a southeastern city in San Diego, uh, near the skyline region uh, of southeast San Diego. But um, uh, you know, we 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 only have two uh, two grocery stores out here, you know. And so if you live on the other end, which is ironically uh, the more affluent end. Uh, you don't have a grocery store for at least four miles, uh, but uh, but you know not only wealthy people, not only upper middle class and middle class people live over there. So for the working class people who don't have cars, what are they going to do? I mean, they're going to catch a bus to the grocery store, catch an Uber, which is far too expensive, or they're going to eat at taco shops, you know, what I mean, or something like that that are still open and just exposing themselves more, not from the food itself, say, but just for the people. So. Yeah, I mean, those are the things that I would that, that, that I, I like to place the focus on, on, so you, uh, on, on structural conditions. So you mentioned um, within that uh, description of you know kind of this post-industrial world, 
And I think that the, the, there's something to be um, really explored there because, you know, so much of the places we're seeing these wide discrepancies uh, are throughout the Midwest and places that might be, you know, called the Rust Belt, right? I mean, we see like, we see it, like you mentioned, Michigan, but like, it's not just happening throughout the entire state of Michigan. It's happening in very particular places right. um, where industry once thrived and, right. and it no longer does. Many people left, mostly white, people who stayed, often black. And these are the spots where we're seeing like a lot of death in the Midwest in this in this kind of post-industrial landscape. Um, so I mean, there's kind of a couple of things happening here. That, you know, you have the great migration, you have the migrations into like these urban centers, these industrial centers. And you have the deindustrialization, um, kind of the abandonment of industry. And now we're seeing the abandonment of um, of the state or whatever you want, whatever you want to say it um, as a whole. So so can you speak a little bit to that? I mean, like uh, how this. The perfect storm for 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 these things to happen or impact I mean, horrible yeah so so that that's that's what i i mean i just wrote an article and uh and, and in an article or at least one of the edits of the article i said that uh covid 19 exposed the contradictions of african life in the post-industrial uh american rust belt you know um so i think that you're absolutely uh correct uh I mean, uh, hospitals, uh, you know, we know that working class people walk around longer uh, uh, with hospitals, uh, uh, work, walk around longer, either the inaccessibility of the hospital, the fear of, 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 of debt and things like that, uh, uh, the frequency to use, uh, um, what are those things, emergency rooms, uh, uh, that's what they call, right, emergency room, mm -hmm. like urgent care, emergency rooms and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. as, as primary care uh, uh, versus, versus uh, you know, primary physicians and things like that. You know, the whole Obama, you know, you can call your doctor and you if you got a doctor you like, you can keep them. And all this other BS, you know, um, uh, that, that became, you know, just the capitulations, constant capitulations of Obamacare. Um, uh, uh, you know, you know, a lot of Africans don't have that physicians. Um, uh, even the, the 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 public health clinics that people might go to were, were over inundated, you know, for class reasons and things like that. I, I go to the local uh, public health clinic and uh, I had a checkup and it was like right when the stuff jumped off, like the 18th or something like that. And, uh, you know, they did my appointment over the phone. And I was like, man, this is crazy, you know, like like uh, they doing appointments over the phone, you know. Uh, mean, but 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 they're still filled up, and I tell them last place you, well, I want to come. You know, now the, the the irony is that the last place you want to come is hospitals, and they're sending people home. You know, to just be inside their houses. Um, there's not enough ventilators in some of these places. There's not enough medicine for the ventilators, uh, 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 and things like that. So, 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 so yeah, that is uh, um. Uh, 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 so, so, so you got the structural, uh, the, the, the structural reality. Um, uh, shoot, I, I wish I had had the numbers off top, but, uh, but it's something to the extent of, of white in white families. Uh, let me pull up, pull up, pull up the, the numbers right now. Um, so, uh, because there's something like I read an article and it says white people tend to think that like uh, 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 the wealth disparity between uh, Africans and white North Americans uh, 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 is closer than it is. Right. You know, even even liberals think that, OK, it's bad, but um, it's like two to one. Or two you know, to one. how. Yeah, 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 yeah. They think it's normally three to one, two to one or something like that. Uh, but if I'm correct, um, uh, the, the, uh, 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 white North American, uh, 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 median wealth, uh, compared to, uh, uh, black folks is, um, is, uh, so, 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 so the black median wealth is, um, is, 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 is 9.5. $9,500, right? Uh, the white median wealth in the United States is $130,000. So, so, I mean, I didn't put that in the article that I wrote, but that, that includes the rappers and, and, and the people with 40 foot jump shots 
You know what I'm saying? People could dance real good and hit yeah. real hard, you know? So that's all those people included. Uh, uh, that includes Oprah. You know what I mean? All the people included, African people, medium wealth in the U.S. is $9,500. So, I mean, you want to look at the disparity between this and then say it has something to do with, you know, black folks eating fried chicken or something like that. I mean, uh, I lived in Texas, so you can't tell me who eat the most fried chicken. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so uh, like, like ribs and crap and ribs and beer and all this other stuff. I mean, you know, I've been to St. Louis. I've been to to the Midwest. You telling me black folks the ones lying up at the rib shacks drinking craft beer and all that other stuff. So, so no, it's like I said. Even it, it's a sort of it's a liberal thing. Even when the liberals think they're making a point, you know, you know, uh, 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 is that you know that, that they that they're stuck with that analysis. You know, that's why. I tell you, I don't care who you who you vote for. Like that's not really the the the, the debate I'm engaging. But the question is sort of like I know for a fact that the only system of analysis that can explain what's taking place is a socialist analysis. And in my viewpoint, uh, well, 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 I feel it's proven that it's African yeah. nationalist analysis. But I don't want to get too much down. Well, well, let's start getting into that. But uh, before we get there, I just want to say that I lived in Texas for two years as well. Well, I lived in two, Texas for two years. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I lived in Dallas, and I saw okay. what I saw what um, the melding of of, of cultures uh, produced, and it was Tex-Mex, and that was like. Oh, <laughs> so, if you want to talk about what happened <laughs> and the unhealthiness of. Like why is there why is there barbecue sauce on this? <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, hey that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's you know what's yeah. crazy. You know you know what's crazy it, is it wasn't until I really embraced Tex Mex that I th that I felt uh, 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 a scene as an African person from Southern California because so many of our parents and, and and grandparents and stuff like that came from Texas. So, yeah. so, so I thought we was weird until, uh, 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 wait, first off, uh, 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 you know that meme where it's got like, uh, it comes from Predator and it's got, um, uh, 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 you know, the fist class. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I want to make one and it's going to say like black people, and Mexican people. And then with, at the fist class, it's going to say uh, putting hot sauce on popcorn. You know what I mean? <laughs> or, or something like that, you know? Because I saw it, and I mean, I went down there and then, or, 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 or like, or like, or like, or like uh, putting ketchup on tacos or something. Cause like, it wasn't until I got to Texas that I, that I realized, okay, so this is where we probably get the putting ketchup on tacos thing from, you know? Cause, cause, uh, cause I remember when I came to San Diego, you know, this wasn't like, you know, that this wasn't like Tex Mex style stuff, you know? I mean, very seriously. I mean, if you look at the earliest restaurants, in Compton and Long Beach and uh, South Los Angeles that were Mexican food restaurants. They were people coming from El Paso and other parts of Texas and, and New Mexico and stuff like that. So so when I went over there, but then you come to San Diego and you got all these people coming out from, you know, uh, uh, Baja and things like that. So I never heard of a shrimp taco until I got to San Diego. Uh, 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 but, 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 but then I remember I came out here and I was like, oh, so, so let me get a, a uh, uh, a ground beef taco, you know, <laughs> with the fried shell, and 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 and, and, and where's the ketchup? And they're looking at me. Like, taco Bell, man. What the hell are you talking about? That is, not, I'm like, or, or like, 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 like grilled, you know, ground beef enchiladas with olives on top. I mean, you know, it's, <laughs> I mean, if you, you got to be from LAC, San Diego people don't understand that, you know. Yeah. But, you know, but I realize it's a Texas New Mex New Mexico thing. And, well, and 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 that's that that's where we learned it from. So, but yeah, I mean, I lived I lived in McAllen, uh, Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley for for three years. Uh, 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 yeah. So I lived in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas for three years. Uh, I, I taught at South Texas College down there, and, uh, and 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 it was cool. It was cool. I even taught Mexican American history, you know. Um, so cool. so it's cool. No, I'm definitely interested in talking to you about that and maybe a little more about some of the parallels. I mean, I want to keep focused today for our talk, but maybe we, another time we can talk about some of the parallels that we find in African and 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 and, and, and Rasa, some of the conditions that, that are shared. Um, maybe we get a little bit today, but like uh, we'd like to focus on this. But I, I don't want to get back on topic, but I do want to. Uh, say yeah, one yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get back on topic, but 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 see, uh, Danielle is feeling it. 
I see you, feel like Danielle. Danielle is like, okay, shoot. I you, I, I see you feel seen too, Danielle. So, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna say one final thing, and this is probably a controversial statement, though. I'm just gonna say that you know they call it Tex-Mex in New Mexico. They call it New Mexican food in California. We call it Mexican food because it is Mexican food. So I'm just saying. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, without a doubt, to me, it represents more regional everything. Yeah. You, you know, people trying to make me act like burritos did not exist. I'm like, okay, so like the first 28 years of my life was a lie when I moved to Texas, you know. <laughs> they're, like, like, they're like, that's not a burrito. We don't have burritos down there. And then I go to a restaurant and, and, and I'm like, well, what's that? Oh, that's a sarape. I'm like, okay, I don't care how you fold it. <laughs> Give me a big ass tortilla with some meat and stuff on the inside, and and I don't care what you call it. Like I'll describe it to you. Oh, oh, that's that's that, that that's not nachos. That's a botana or something like that. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Like the, whatever you wanna. That's a chalupa. That's that's not a tostada. Yeah. Okay, I don't, you know. So so so, but but no, it's, it really is. It really is regional. Uh, uh, over there, you know, the culture overall is heavily influenced by people migrating from. Um, from 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 really like cowboy type stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, nor, nor, northern northern plains of, of Mexico and things like that. So 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 it's a uh, uh, so 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 whereas uh, uh, you know so so it's very it's very important. Uh, right now I'm teaching politically. Get back on political track. I'm teaching yeah. a class and 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 we begin in Mexican American and in, in Chicano history, uh, but but we're taking a, a internationalist perspective and looking at the solidarity between African and Mexican indigenous people in um, in in, uh, in in the struggle. So we begin with the point of, of colonization of, Af of the Americas and enslavement of African people. Then we move forward and we look at the maroon societies and uh, all the way to the way in which the uh, Sort of a, a, a American uh, war for uh, the the Mexican war for independence was a, a a war against slavery and colonialism and stuff like that. So so uh, so yeah 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 yeah. No, I mean like if you look anywhere from like you know the South Side of Chicago to Navajo Nation or to the way this is gonna it's ravaging you know farm workers in Immokalee. Um, there is yeah. a history. There is a history to all these discrepancies. I mean, yeah, 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 exactly. So that's why we say it's the colonial virus, right? So, so when you see the people saying we want to open up back up the cities and stuff like that, what they're really saying is, okay, it don't seem to be killing us. You know what I mean? Uh, 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 you know, because in the places, so 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 they shut down everything so quick uh, once it was because it began by killing uh, 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 the global elite. You know, because yeah. I didn't even know where Wuhan was until. I heard of this virus, to be completely honest, you know, uh, and I got a PhD, you know, so I'm pretty sure nobody else knew where Wuhan was. I, I mean, you can't, if you give me a hundred dollars, I couldn't point out on the map. I sort of like, just like make up some shit, you know? So, so, um, so, uh, and you know, we hold up Mao and everything, but I don't know where Wuhan was. I'm pretty sure it's just a place that was industrialized over the last 40 years. Uh, 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 to, to feed global capitalism, you know, as a part of the yeah. neoliberal turn over in uh, in China. So, so I don't know about Wuhan, uh, but but you know, I heard Tesla's over there, all this sort of cellular technology and stuff like that is over there, and things like that. So, so, um, so, 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 so when they thought they was going to die, or you know, you know, by by be, be, by going to the basketball games or something. You know, got shut down, but 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 now, I mean, I really think that they're saying, okay, you know, we don't really have a chance to die from this. You know, I see one sign says, "Oh, my children are homeschooled." You know what I mean? You know, uh, uh, so 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 we good. You know, once again, like I said, they're basically using the fact that you know they're basically saying we already social distance. You know, uh, we already have removed ourselves from the masses of colonized people in the U.S. So so. So so let's go back to normal so I can make some more money or something like that, you know. Um uh uh you know, so 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 yeah, so uh um yeah, I mean like you said, it's ripping through indigenous areas right now. Uh oddly enough though, they said like North Dakota, South Dakota didn't have a death or something, but 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 see, even when they say that, all that means is this just that there's more space between African indigenous people 
uh, and indigenous, I'm including, you know, Chicano people, Chicanx people, uh, uh, people of Central America, people of South America, and my understanding of indigeneity, you know, so I'm not honoring borders, right? So, 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 so when we talk about uh, indigenous people, uh, uh, Asian people, African people, um, uh, 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 like I, whenever they say the numbers aren't high, to me that just means that it hasn't hit us yet. But once it hits, it's going to spike. So, so, so my concern is my concern is that um, uh, even with the liberal analysis and everybody wants to pat Gavin Newsom on the back, the rubric that they're having towards reopening and flattening the curve isn't looking at the curve and the uh, African indigenous uh, communities, you know, is that, that that's not being taken to taken into concern, right? So the moment that they open back up, and these essential uh, quote unquote other workers they want to call essential go back to work, you know, my brother worked at a rib shack, you know, uh, uh, and 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 he's smart, so he's staying home. But the moment he goes back to work because Gavin Newsom told him he can go back to work or something like that, look, you know. I'm pretty sure my union is going to say, hey, you know, teachers ain't going back to school in the face of people until there's a vaccine or something. Right. Yeah. So so I'll be at home with my kids, but other people, in my family will be back at work, uh, 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 working for these other people and, and, and could mess around and die or something like that. So so so, yeah. So so that's 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 sort of my concern. So so a lot of this analysis you're offering, you didn't um, you didn't come up with all this on your own. Right. Uh, no, nah, I'm, 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 I'll try to be smart, but no, nah, heck no, nah, I didn't come up with it on my own. Um, exactly. Are they even counting the tribes in North and South Dakota? That That's exactly it, right? So, uh, uh, Danielle, um, right? So, so, so they saying, okay, no, no deaths in the Dakotas, but it's like, you know, they probably mean no white settler deaths. I mean, you know, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, that's the thing, right? You know, you got the whole, we're not, we're, our numbers are low uh, 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 phenomenon. Uh, but no one wants to say, uh, wants to be honest about the fact that they're probably just low. we already see the high numbers. Then we know the deaths that aren't being counted, uh, and then if a death isn't counted, what happens is because that death isn't counted, there's no urgency for the people around them to get tested. So 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 there could be an outbreak and people are dying, but. But 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 people aren't getting tested, you know. So 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 it's it's, it's a whole. Uh, I don't wanna, I don't want to cuss, but it's a shit show, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, 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 because like I said, you know, if they and they say thirty percent of the tests can be false negatives, another thirty percent can be false positives. So it's like it's like, you know, Africans are really exposed. I mean, I was thinking about this. I said Western science and Western medicine. Can send humans to the moon. Can turn computers into uh, 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 into telephones uh, and stuff like that. But but the best they got for us with this is don't touch your face. I'm like, come on, man, that's some bullshit. You know uh, how they? That's not science. Don't yeah, touch yeah. your face. I mean, you better off trying to tell somebody to uh, 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 take their tongue and try to touch the tip of their nose. You know. Uh, uh, then, then to don't, then to don't touch your face as as a medical science. I mean, I try to do that, and my face start itching, and I'm like, I'm sitting there, my face is burning, and my hands are down, and I'm exactly, I'm doing all this stuff. It's like that. Th this isn't science, man. If if if, if this is what you got to offer people, uh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, you know. Uh, 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 meanwhile, China. And the and 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 the U.S. giving out masks, you know what I'm saying? And it's not the U.S., China, and, and and Cuba giving out masks to people. Uh, yeah. And uh, and, um, and 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 we telling people uh, to, to to don't touch your face or walk around like you gang banging or something, you know? Yeah. And my wife walked out of the house with a blue bandana around her face, and we live in her skyline in San Diego. I was like, no, no, don't do it, baby. Just stay inside, you know. And then she had this other. Thing with like Bob Marley, say so, yeah, put the Bob Marley one around your face. They love Bob in San Diego, but don't don't put that blue rag around your face, you know. And, and the truth is that I seen a guy do a test, you know, 
they telling people to make the bandanas and stuff, but that's almost just psychological. You know, you feel good, you feel like you're safe. But I seen somebody do the test of the N95 well, yeah. or the other stuff, and it's like yeah. if the person really was coughing, you know, uh, on you, the the, the bandana is not really working per se. You know, it's uh, so. So yeah. Yeah. What, I want, what I wanted to say was, um, you know, this this is a great conversation, and actually yesterday I had um. Yesterday, I had a, a the poor lawyer of McAllen, Texas, who I think is messaging me right now about about talking about Tex-Mex or something. I'm not sure. But, oh, um, oh, who's from McAllen? So, so Danielle is from McAllen. Yeah, McAllen, yeah. But yesterday, I actually interviewed the oh, poor oh, lawyer. Oh, Danielle, you from McAllen? Okay, yeah. yes. So, so uh, 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 I used to live off of Nolana and Ware, uh, 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 right down the street from that Target. Uh, let him know that uh, I lived on I lived on Nightshade Street. Yeah. Nightshade. Right, well, and you can hear it, so um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Glory on the duels from the valley, yeah. But sorry, yeah, yeah. go for it. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so well, there was a couple of things I wanted to touch on, but um, I wanted to get into like okay, so um, you know, just talking about the importance, generally speaking, of joining a political organization to help sharpen your analysis and also, yeah, you know, throw your energy towards something and get into that. But before we yeah. get into that, it is interesting that the contrasting. You know, the United States of America, which is the wealthiest nation on earth because of imperialism, right? Um, right. Uh, it ha has the most commodities per capita or something like that, if we're going to find wealth right. that way. It's a situation where, you know, we don't have a supply of these these vital items in a time of, of pandemic, right? Because, you know, everything's produced to be sold. Whereas... Cuba can do certain things, whereas China, even with a neoliberal turn, can still do certain things, right? In the United States of America, right, don't right, touch your face. Right, right. Like, like party, capitalist government, but they still have, I've noticed, a sort of communist structure which shields certain people, at, at least at the bottom of society, right? So it's like, so, so it's like they've opened up the roof, but they haven't sort of uh, 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 let the floor drop out on their people. And I think that's what people will have to, you know, even when we're given uh, progressive socialist communist analysis of them, you know, uh, you know, because so so when when I teach him at UCSD, it's a uh, a rich kid can come because his parents are extremely wealthy because they're working for some American corporation, but a poor kid can come too, you know what I mean? And and he's going to go back, he's going to work for the state or something. The deep irony is that it's only, it's only the poor people who actually remember Mao, you know? So, 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 so it's like, uh, so, so, so we be in class talking about Mao and the only people that know Mao is the kids from Taiwan, the working class kids from mainland China and the African people in class. So, 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 so the sort of working class Chinese people and, 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 and the African people, man, we, uh, 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 uh we we get down um we get down so 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 yeah okay so yeah raised in mission uh raised in mission uh, you know who's from mission texas is uh uh what's his name that was the darn um the the coach uh landry tom landry is from mission texas uh the Rio Grande valley is a trip man it's it's a trip it's like it's, it really is it's 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 like it's one thing that like like really lets you know that class uh, uh, is real and central to the uh, understanding. So he lived in a place called Mission, which is a real, like you would consider, say, Mission and Callan kind of like the same sort of area per se, but but but, but Mission as well as Hidalgo to the south of McAllen uh, 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 and far and stuff like that, Westco to the east, is, 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 is extremely, extremely uh, a working class and stuff like that. Um, uh, uh, so, 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 I mean, I, I like to say that like I went to Texas as a liberal and I left a socialist, right? So, 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 like that's the, uh, or at least sort of democratic socialist or something. I was like a Michael Moore liberal when I went there, right? And I left a socialist, uh, uh, because of the contradictions, right, of, of life and, and the way in which my consciousness was raised, uh, uh, while living out there and struggling in Texas and things like that. So, um, yeah. yeah. Uh um I forget what what what, what is the importance of uh of political organization and helping us sharpen our analysis and also giving us a place to put our energy. Oh uh, yeah, so so, so the uh, and political organization is crucial, right? 
Uh, I mean, we see the 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 concern over collective action, self reliance, things like that, uh, from you know the mutual aid groups being formed right now uh, to um, you know rappers and athletes and things like that going online and, and telling people that you know uh, uh, we all we got and stuff like that. Um, uh, 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 those are, um, that is, um, uh, uh, central to, 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 to what's going on all the way to, to, to the DJ parties. Right. So, so we know that there's a yearn for self-reliance and self-determination, um, but people have to get politically organized if it's going to move from a sort of survivalism or say cultural, collectivity and things like that to uh, a real political organization getting uh, our demands met. I mean, it's interesting to see times of political crisis, uh, 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 times of political crisis uh, calls for rapid uh, uh, acceleration, you know, uh, of, of these um, conditions and things like that uh, and, and, and political activism. I mean, you know, uh, two things, two things I'll say, you know, and we'll talk about the International People's Democratic Rural Movement, of which I'm a part of the executive committee. Um, but uh, two things I've noticed, right? You know, uh, 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 our membership has grown during this moment, even as we're not doing face to face outreach. Our membership has, has grown. Um, uh, 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 and it's two things it's sort of uh, the, the young people. Uh, realizing the contradictions that I realized when I was around their age with the Democratic Party, uh, especially especially since, since since they were for Bernie, right? This you got this bullshit sort of you know putting black against brown, and I'm from Long Beach, so I try not to play the whole black against brown thing because I see where it really goes, you know. But a lot of a lot of the petty bourgeois types that aren't from uh, South Los Angeles, Compton, Watts, Long Beach, uh, 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 they don't have to deal with this, right? So like they fighting for just some some what Eldridge Cleaver called dirty dollars uh, 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 from, from the Democratic Party. Uh, and, and they want to play in this whole sort of like black vote, uh, 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 Latino vote. Well, um, I mean, look, voting for the Democrats is not uhuru, right? It's not freedom. <laughs> I know. Uh, but, but, I mean, but if we want to talk about it, right, uh, Africans and Latinx people have the same contradictions, right? When you look at Lat Latinx youth, they vote at the same rate for Bernie as, as black youth, right? When you look at Latinx elders, they vote at the same rate as, 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 as black elders. It's just, they voted at different amounts, right? You know, so, so, so they say Latino vote for Bernie, black vote for Biden and, and, and all this other nonsense um uh trying trying to push people against each other but so what happens is the youth uh, uh realize you know hey you know here's the one thing that we thought sort of was going to be some sort of compromise we can make that could uh improve our material conditions and um and 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 and, and they saw themselves get screwed they saw sort of petty bourgeois race politics uh yeah. coming in uh, uh with, with the little race hustlers uh, you know, people, you ain't seen Jim Clyburn ass for a month now, over a month. I ain't seen his ass for six weeks, but for that week before the South Carolina primary, his ass was on TV left and right talking about, you know, uh, 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 with the, with this old crooked ass smirk on his face, like, yeah. you know, like he run the black Tammany Hall or something like that, you know, uh, um, it, it, like, 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 like basically like we got it rigged, you know, we, you know. Uh, you know, voter ID laws, all sorts of stuff turning young people away. Uh, right. state, states where you're like, man, if you live in Texas, bro, uh, uh, the state elections would be one place, and the, the federal elections be another place. You got to drive around. Uh, uh, the bus system in McAllen was terrible. So, so if you don't actually have a, a, uh, have a, a car and you live in the Rio Grande Valley and you want to vote in state elections and federal elections, they might be in two different places. And I'm, I swear to God, I'm no lie, right? Uh, I had to vote uh, back in 20, 2008, 2010. Uh, uh, one place was was all the way over in um, at, at this middle school. Then I had to drive to some other place and vote somewhere else. Luckily, 
uh, I, you know, I, you know, yeah. So I didn't even want to say what I was really doing. So, yeah. Why? Well, you know, it's it's so fascinating though, looking at like. Um, oh, oh, so 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 political organization. So so it so so the thing is that we get this windfall of membership because of the fact that um, uh, we got in this windfall of membership uh, 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 because of the fact that like you know people are, are rising up to the to 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 uh, to understanding. Uh, 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 the contradictions, the conditions are are sort of uh, are pushing people towards 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 political life. People whom I wouldn't have expected, right? Um, because I think it's conditions like this that sort of uh, uh, is allowing for people to understand the way through which uh, 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 all colonized people, uh, all people of African, Mexican, Indigenous heritage are are oppressed. Um, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, we either got the deal of being overworked and underpaid, or overworked, and uh, 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 you know what I'm saying. So, so, so there's so many contradictions. Uh, so, 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 so people have to become politically organized, and that's it. Sort of um, uh, organizations. What I would say that sort of uh, get you developed locally, but also help you uh, 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 have a broader analysis that allows you to connect your culture uh, or, or your 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 perspective to other places because it's so crucial right now it's it's it, it's so crucial right now for for us to be able to have these conversations uh, uh, so that people don't put uh, 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 um, uh, uh, so, so so people don't put uh, together um you know, bad analysis because this terrible analysis going on over the China thing in Africa right now. You got sort of petty bourgeois merchants crapping on African workers in China. You got neo-colonial leaders crapping on Chinese workers in Africa, and and on both sides people are like fanning the flames and applauding it. You got Africans in the U.S. Uh, like I said the other day, uh, you, you know, determining uh, their analysis of of, of of Chinese geopolitics by their relationship. With with Korean and Vietnamese merchants in the United States, you know, uh, it's it's like it's like that's not analysis, you know what I'm saying? That's just you leading with 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 your own emotions, and at the very worst, that's that's just Orientalism, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's it's, it's like I mean, there's a way to explain what's going on there, uh, but once again, it always points back towards Western imperialism. You know, look at the sites that even talk about all the stuff in China. Uh, every single time I read an article being shared about the problem in China and in Africa, it's by Forbes, it's by Fortune, it's by you know Washington Times, which you might as well wipe your ass with the Washington Times. I mean, wasn't that started by the dude like the Moonies or something like that? You know, like some real crazy people. So, so, uh, so, 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 yeah. So, so that's that's the problem. Uh, that I see. Uh, so, so, so people need to be politically organized um, uh, 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 with boots on the ground, with the ability to have uh, analysis. And um, I mean, I would ask people uh, that's African out there that want to get involved to to go to npdum.org, I-N-P-D-U-M.org, and become a member of the uh, International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Chicanx people, I will, uh, you know, Chicanx people, Mexican indigenous people can join in PETA, but also uh, I say uh, uh, go and go to uh, uniondelbarrio.org uh, and look into uh, Union, uh, a revolutionary nationalist Mexican organization uh, here uh, uh, based in San Diego, but they are a national uh, 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 and stuff like that. So I would say, you know, get organized, get, get organized. I mean, Organize, organize, organize. I mean, that's the lesson that uh, Kwame Ture put forward, right? You know, if you uh, if you're a person who really care about something, uh, uh, and you can't find other people whom you whom you could work with, uh, uh, either uh, as an official member or as a volunteer or something like that, then uh, you know you, you fall in prey uh, to yeah. the problems. Uh, one last thing I'll say about conditions is that you know the U.S. Uh, everyone's having real problems, even like the progressive people, even people. Who are against, uh, say, you know, Trump, and, and know that this is nonsense. They having trouble with their analysis right now because for seventy years, the the the, the dominant hegemony here has been 
um, uh, 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 the dominant hegemony here. Yeah, Danielle, like I got family from from Panama, Danielle. So so yeah, we can talk about that later too. Um, uh, 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 the, the dominant hegemony has been individualism, right? So so it was you know you know we so so even with the in within the liberal conservative the hegemon of the United States. They haven't really been asked to sacrifice. The only people that's really been asked to sacrifice is is is, is African people or uh, and, and Mexican indigenous people within the United States. But 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 but, but yeah. So so uh, so so they don't know what to do. You know, I teach about. World War II, you know, like I said, even from the state level, people who lived in World War II, you know, they 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 remember rationings and curfews and stuff like that. I mean, uh, so so even amongst the mainstream Americans, they don't know how to how to how to get organized. So so for us, you see people saying, you know, fuck the government, you know, you, you, you know, we're gonna throw this barbecue, you know, ain't nobody gonna stop me from uh uh uh, uh 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 having this birthday party you know we're gonna have this birthday party for pop pop you know uh and big mom man <laughs> so um, <laughs> but, but, but no right anybody stop us around this birthday party or oh, that's some white stuff you know you know they said it's 5g anyway and, and i got an obama phone so i'm good you know uh 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 you know that sort of misinformation going on so 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 to where to where almost like people are you know i don't want to offend anybody but but the best resistance they can imagine is sort of like like libertarian and anarchical, you know what I mean? You know, so it's like, we're gonna do our own thing, you know, can't nothing kill black joy or something like that, you know, we're gonna have a party or something like that, you know, and things like that. So this is really time for people to get uh, politically organized and politically uh, informed. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, a, it's good advice for anyone anywhere to organize your life around science. I mean, like, don't put yeah. it Oh, yeah. you know, your hand. That's like, that's organizing around science. Don't stick a fork in the outlet. That's organizing your life around science. So just right, just, right, exactly. Yeah, extend it. You know, <laughs> like question, because all science means is sort of like coming to answers, a answers through some form of trial and error. Yeah. So, so, so I mean, if you a uh, curandero, uh, 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 and, and over the last. You know, 500, 600, 700 years of, of your tradition, uh, 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 you know things that are good, things that don't work, and you don't use it. If something don't work, you don't use it anymore. If something that works, you use it again. Um, uh, 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 then, 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 yeah, uh, that is that's science. You know what I mean? That's a scientific method, you know. Uh, uh, but you got to approach this with science and scientific analysis, uh, uh, which is my thing. Um, yeah. you, you know, it can't be a subjective idealism, you know, uh, issue. Even I talked to my mom and my mom was like, you know, you know, we praying that God guides the hands of these doctors, you know, you know what I mean? So like, like, so you're telling me even like evangelical Christians are like, look, science, we going with you right now. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, um, you know, meanwhile, I got to talk to somebody else who called themselves a black power advocate and they talking about, you know, you know, all you need is a certain level of like battery acid in your water or something like that. You know, uh, and I mean al alkaline. It's not really battery acid, right? but, but you know, they you know, that's what they're talking about. You know, uh, it's like that's that, that that's, that's that's idealism. You know, uh, we, we got to deal with science right now. I mean, there's things you could do to boost your immunity, stuff like that. Uh, I've, been, yeah. I've been drinking a lot of vitamin C because I just I heard that's something that's going they're doing. But right, uh, right, vitamin C, elderberry. So we've been doing that. This is even tea, right? I, I've been laying off of the coffee. Um, uh, uh, I don't drink uh, and things like that. Um, you know, just just whatever you can do to boost your immune system. Uh, 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 that's what's going to help you uh, sur sur survive this if you get it. You know, but like, but once again, you know, it goes back to those material conditions. If you drive Uber and you work uh, 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 as a stocking stocking clerk, uh, 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 and you work as a stocking clerk, stockroom clerk, uh, then um, you know you work an average of twelve to sixteen hours a day. You're going to be tired, yeah. Right. So if you catch something, anybody know you catch a sickness when you're tired, it's going to run through you. You know. Uh, so, so, um, 
So, so I mean, that's the other thing about the spring season. The spring season has the least holidays, right? The least days off of work. And then it's also the time in which you got the flu season. So, so there's all these material conditions. Yeah, yeah, we, we could talk about. Right. So, and one of the things I was want to get back to though was you were talking about you know building up of uh, impedum, building up of UDB, um, and just building these organizations. And I think that scientifically it makes you know trial and error. I mean, you cannot. The Democratic Party itself serves as a loyal opposition to the Republicans, but even within the Democratic Party, the left wing of the, the so-called left wing of the Democratic Party serves as loyal opposition to the Democratic Party within the Democratic Party, right? So we see Bernie Sanders um, immediately uh, rush to endorse um, Joe Biden, right? Right. And now it's gone on the bully pulpit against his own supporters, his own followers, saying that if they don't get in line, that they're the ones that are ushering in Trump, right? So using the exact same talking points as Joe Biden or as Biden's supporters um, upon Sanders supporters by Bernie Sanders himself. So we see that the Democrats, they serve as a loyal opposition to the Republicans, but within the Democratic Party, the left wing of the Democratic Party serves them. So there's just no hope in trying to pour your time and energy and analysis within the Democratic Party. You've got to build outside it. I mean, I'm, I, would you share Yeah, this? I mean, even arguing with people online is, 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 is not worth it. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, it, it, it just it just doesn't do anything for me anymore. You know, I refuse to engage it. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you got to organize. But I, what I realize is the places where where it's very, very strong. You know what I mean? I realize some people, especially like uh, petty bourgeois, quote unquote, middle class types of people of that's, uh, you know, African, Mexican or whatever. Um, in the U.S., uh, I think they really look at the Democratic Party as if the Democratic Party is a grassroots political affiliate, uh, affiliation. You know, they'd be riding for it. They ride for it more than, than Obama ride for it. People dying left and right, and his ass ain't said shit until this week. You know? So, 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 so they be riding. He ain't no Democrat anyway. You know, a real Democrat. What's a real Democrat? You know, so, so then they got the party culture. You know, uh, 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 I've noticed that their party culture is it's like it's the same party culture that had white primaries in the 1940s. And before that, they just do that now for black people in the South to win or or for Mexican people to win in Texas. Right. So so so, so there's a way to which the hegemony and the way in which the party function has never shifted. It's just sort of they're just using it for for their own gain. Or, or something like that, but yeah, people gotta, people gotta, gotta move beyond it. And the other thing is, like, people try to make it seem as if, as if they want you to get involved in this in some form of of of, of radical, um, so some pragmatism or something like that. But just the pragmatism is gone. Is I don't see how pragmatically a person can suggest engaging anything beyond circling uh, something on a on on a bubble into building up the democratic party um it's just it's just it's just i mean it's it's, it's really a waste of time you know what i mean yeah because uh, i mean remember beto beto get up there he you know he's sound real real cool because he said he's gonna take away people guns because that's what the people on twitter want to hear you know what i mean that's yeah. that's not even that's that's not even a, a material struggle i'm trying to wage right now discussion yeah. over second amendment rights you know i'm black but i believe in second amendment rights you don't have rights those rights weren't made for you either you know what i mean when yeah. got guns conservatives passed law so pe people can't have guns no more you know what i mean uh so it's it's it's, it's yeah it's just nice. so, so danielle earlier asked about i think it's sex ways into it what about these anti-vaxxers where is this all coming from and i think that um that's a good conversation to have i mean like i understand like you know it's very easy to look at the anti-vaxxers and this kind of like libertarian strain and see like um how it plays out you know, in, amongst you know white people, um, that's 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 easy, right? But like but a lot of people of color, that I mean, or I hate that term. You got colonized people that are really anti-vaxxers. I mean, I, I know yeah. someone that was like, right. I ain't no vaccine. It's like, look, well, well, well if you go to um, the uh, the t h e burning spear dot com, so so that's the the newspaper for the Uhuru movement. TheBurningSpear.com. Let me write that in. Okay. I don't even know if I can comment, but uh, but 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 go to the uh, 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 go to TheBurningSpear.com and um, 
and and uh, and, and, and 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 you'll get our position on it. So the position is no to colonial vaccination. Um, uh, 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 I mean, I think the science is out there on vaccines. I mean, uh, 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 you know, uh, coronavirus isn't caused by 5G. You know, um, vaccines don't cause autism. Right. Uh, uh, but the thing is, there's a subjective level through way, uh, a, a, a cunningly subjective level through which these conversations about vaccines are had uh, to where people say, well, that might be true, Michael, but you know, uh, I'm a hold off anyway, uh, just to be safe, right? Um, so, so it's like, no, you, you're not being safe. Uh, but, 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 but the problem is colonial vaccination uh, because people don't trust the 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 government, right? So, so they need government. This is why you got to be politically organized because, and that's why we need self determination. That's why we need. Uh, 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 revolutionary people to be in charge of, of science, because as one uh, as one person said, look, if 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 Cuba created a vaccine, she'd take the vaccine tomorrow. You know, so so it's not that she's anti-science; she's anti-colonialism, and she doesn't uh, believe in the anti-life agenda that colonizers uh, have going on. So. So, so, so to me, that's the that's the, the the more scientific position, but 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 the problem but the problem is much of the the whole anti-vaccine culture originates from uh, uh, the libertarian uh, right uh, 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 and the sort of black helicopter conspiracy crowd on the right, uh, but but because it's exposing the contradictions of liberal government. Uh, 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 it becomes attractive to uh, people, especially people coming into consciousness. You know, when I was a kid, everybody read, you know, behold the white horse. And then I found out, I thought it was a brother, you know, talking to him, and then come to find out some crazy ass white dude from New Mexico or something like that, uh, 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 who was, who was, who wrote that book. And, and he wasn't a revolutionary, but the thing is, I think in the book, he, he talked about the crack epidemic or something out of the government, sort of put crack in the ghetto or something like that. And people read that part, but 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 like they didn't read the part about where he like basically says that like then there's gonna be a race war because of it. You know what I mean? So it's like so 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 yeah so so that's the thing about the anti vaxxers um uh uh uh, uh, uh it, it's prominent in the communities of colonized people in the US and outside because because vaccines are, are, are run by colonial um, uh, medicine is run by colonial forces and and because of the history of medical apartheid and stuff like that but you know what there's a guy but but you know there's evidence so it's different ways right you got people concerned okay the vaccines this but then you but then there's evidence of of, of UN and NATO forces in Africa during the Ebola virus telling people, that the, the the military force is telling people that vaccines are over are are, are generally uh, uh, ineffective. So they're in places telling people that vaccines are ineffective, while at the same time telling their own people to take vaccines before they travel overseas. Right, right, so, right. So, so, so to me, um, uh, uh, um, so to me. You know, uh, it's it's not the question about whether vaccines work; it's about who administers the vaccines and yeah. stuff. And then there's a capitalist culture, right? You know, you go in, you know, hey man, my knee hurt, and they're like, "Did you get chicken box vaccine? Did you get this vaccine? Did you get that vaccine? Did you get that vaccine?" And I'm like, "Damn, man, I came in because because my knee hurt. Like, 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 why are you trying to push these vaccines on me?" They yeah. say, oh, "Sure, I'll take a shot." And they're like, "Okay, well, well, that's like this, but you only got to pay five dollars because it's a copay." But then you realize, okay, they didn't build my my, my 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 darn thing for four hundred dollars or something like that, you know. Uh, yeah. My insurance company for four hundred dollars off of all these vaccines they gave me today. So so yeah. So so but this is why. Look, that's why my article is parasitic capitalism is the conspiracy. No right. one's suggesting that because your conspiracy theory is wrong that there is not a plan to govern. But it's but 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 it's been public. 
It's, you know, yeah. every single morning they wake up and the people who run society wake up and go trade your stocks, you know? Uh, 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 they get themselves elected. They pat each other on the back and stuff like that, you know? That's why we have to have that, uh, that, that sort of, uh, analysis, but but it's but when you have a revolution analysis, it, it, it sort of it asks you to do something to overturn the contradictions. Um, you know, conspiracy theories being floated around, they, they they don't right, except to just be woke or do the very minimal, or even worse, to support another person with your money. You know, but like you know that that that's the problem. Well, you know, I mean, I think that the Tuskegee. Uh, you know, Zyklon B on the border, uh, you know, spraying people with DDT, and of course, you know, the Native Americans with small punks blankets, and these are all very egregious things that are, are kind of in the public mind, right? So, I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense why you wouldn't trust the government, uh, medically, right? But as you say, that's not the same as saying the motion doesn't work. Um, but I think that when it comes to this anti vax stuff, you, you're not just looking at one individual conspiracy, it's like kind of it usually comes packaged with a conspiracy buffet. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so the conspiracy buffet ideology, I mean, what I notice the most is that when it's practiced outside of this kind of the white libertarian core. When and it ain't not enough workers love more than buffets. <laughs> when, it, when it's practiced by other people, colonized people, it usually has some kind of defense of the family. It usually has some type right. of masculinity. And that is something uh, of an issue all to, unto itself that, that really... I think needs to be addressed within like why 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 are people like so quick to believe that there's this grand conspiracy against the man being men being men or this or that um that's something that like is is kind of internal that's something that has to be like uh, and because you want men to be men you're going to go out and cough on each other and die you know what I mean like so you know, there's a kind yeah, of yeah, like, yeah 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 no no that's I mean I seen somebody circulating the uh the tuskegee experiment you know about why you shouldn't get vaccines uh well they lined up to get vaccines and they gave them syphilis and it's like that's not how it worked i mean look because i want you to know the truth about the 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 the, the damn uh tuskegee experiment you acting like i'm with the man you know it's like that's just not how it worked i mean the people went in for treatment and they weren't they either weren't told they had syphilis or they weren't told that there was a cure for syphilis. So the treatment that was withheld to them was penicillin. Penicillin is an antibiotic. Antibiotics are not vaccines. Antibiotics, you know, kill, kill, kill bacteria and antibodies. With, but that's not how viruses work. You know what I mean? Viruses can't be killed by antibiotics. That's why, I mean, the other thing was like, you know, don't take uh, penicillin, don't take amoxicillin. Uh, it makes it worse or something. I don't know if it makes it worse. Once again, it's still up in the air. Uh, uh, but but what, but what we do know is it basically like kills down everything in your system. So if you got something good in your system, that's fighting against the bad things in your system. But 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 that might that that might be the issue. Uh, 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 but 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 nevertheless. You know, we have to study the history correctly. Like there's a history of, of medical abuse and medical uh, uh, apartheid, which has caused distrust of people of, 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 of colonial medicine. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so it's very sensitive, but I think the sort of uh, being socialist and require us to be truthful to the people yeah. and not just play to the crowd. Like that's the difference between what we call African internationalism and say what, uh, hold on one second, please. Sure. Well, the audience will know I've been touching my face. I also, I just, I just, uh, I just put this stuff on Purell. I don't know what this is, but Purell knockoff to, to clean my hands. So I'm being socially responsible and not, not making a bad example for, for everyone watching right now. So, but yeah, so, go for it. Don't say anything on my feed or inbox me about how I've been touching my face. You saw me just put the stuff in my hands. So, but right. I mean, you're not outside. You can touch your face all you want inside your house. <laughs> like you inside your house, you touch your face like what? Like I said, that's that's not the sign. <laughs> what I can't touch my face inside my house. Like I can't touch my face inside my house. Like, 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 like what are you going to sit six feet apart from somebody on your couch inside your house? You Keep know, your head apart from your face. 
Yeah, that's the, exactly because I've seen people say he said don't touch your face and he's touching his face like <laughs> it, it ain't like I'm an open uh, it, it ain't like I'm a, at one of these downtown rallies touching my face you know it's touching <laughs> my face like yeah yeah you would do a whole lot of stuff at their house that that that, that is none of your business so yeah, and not for public consumption <laughs> uh, exactly. Shit, touching my face is the least of your words at my house. <laughs> All right, so so um, so how how did you go from becoming a liberal? To, okay, well, boy, before we do that, what is the distinction between Pan Africanism and African internationalism? All right, so uh, African internationalism is 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 a uh, is a historical materialist, dialectical materialist, socialist theory of the African working class, right? Uh, it believes in the unification of African people. It believes in the unification of all uh, working class people globally. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, like I said, it's a sort of dialectical materialist uh, analysis. Um, uh, at best, uh, Pan-Africanism, uh, by definition, right, is about uh, the unity of African people. It's largely a cultural uh, ideology without it baked but baked into pan-Africanism is not, uh, say, a, a theory of explanation uh, 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 of the world uh, at a material level uh, in the place of African people in it. Um, so, 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 so that's the difference uh, between pan-Africanism and uh, African internationalism. Now, you've got people who probably come close to it, like Mar Walter Rodney and others, who you'd understand as Pan-African socialists or Pan-African Marxists and all this other stuff, but African internationalism is 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 is, is, is a, a tried and tested theory that's developed over the last uh, uh, fifty years, forty-five plus years um, uh, uh, of African liberation. Um, uh, uh, so so yeah, so that's really um, the difference. Um, uh, uh, it's a very material difference. You can go to Burning Spear. You can get you uh, you can read an article i think it's called uh, like pan africanism versus african internationalism or something like that uh yeah 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 so 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 that's the difference uh with with african internationalism and, and i think one of the questions you're going to ask is like you know my my role to african internationalism oh, yeah. probably about five years ago i would have referred to myself as a pan-african socialist or something like that but uh or pan-african marxist or something but uh but yeah um, uh, well, I found, you know, Pan-Africanism, African internationalism by way of sort of first off studying the larger body of black internationalist politics, uh, uh, which is a lot more um, generalizing academic term. It's not necessarily a political organizational term. Uh, well, well, the term black internationalism was created by, by, uh, by the Revolutionary Action Movement, RAM, in the 1960s. Uh, and, and basically, in the position letter they put out, uh, they they basically argue that um, that what we understand as um, uh, a black nationalism really isn't a nationalism in, at all. It's actually an international and and things like that. So 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 black internationalism uh, uh, and what was central to at least their argument. In the 1970s and 1960s, was really a unification of black nationalist thought and socialist thought, right? Uh, but, but, um, but, 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 but in the 19, but, but Chairman O'Malley uh, uh, uh Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party, uh, created um, uh, the theory of African internationalism. Uh, like I said, none of those other things had ever been sort of uh, uh, theorized, um, tested. Uh, 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 placed into political practice and stuff like that. But uh, Chairman O'Malley used to tell uh, 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 the idea of African internationalism uh, years ago. Um, uh, uh, crafted it right. So, so, so it's through it's through study and political practice uh, 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 that I um, uh, came towards African internationalism. And he, so even when I was in other organizations, I, I identified myself as an African internationalist, but central to African internationalism is self-reliance, self-determination of African people so organized in African organization. Uh, so, so that's what 
I felt necessitated. So um, I had been a sustaining member of Impedum, which basically just means that like I had paid money before to support it, but I never really been an organizing member. Uh, but last year uh, I started to uh, organize uh, uh, as a member of Impedum, not just a community person in support of Impedum. And, and from there, uh, uh, I, I moved to international leadership uh, in Impedum, the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. Uh, I N P D U M dot O R G, uh, uh, and then uh, earlier this year I joined the African People's Socialist Party. So yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that that's a that's a great story. I'm going to drop all the links so people can have an, a, a, a a way to connect to everything we've been discussing today. I would be remiss. Um, you know, oftentimes I do these things and I pretend like I'm just somebody that doesn't know anything, just asking questions, and I don't know anybody, right? Um, but I would be remiss by people who know me my name, who, who you know, I've been to their house and watched, you know, sporting events and stuff. <laughs> if I didn't ask you about the connection between um, between um, Peter and and, uh, and you know the Yehuda movement in general and uh, Union Del Barrio and how how, okay, how, yeah. how deep those ties go, because they would people who know me would. Yeah, be yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, like I said, when you look at the connections between Impedum, the Uhuru Movement, African People's Socialist Party, and a group like Union del Barrio, uh, the Chicano Mexicano Prison Project, stuff like that, um, uh, uh, that really is central to the internationalist uh, understanding of struggle, uh, which separates internationalism from, from really uh, race nationalism, right? Because, you know, the race nationalists say things like, well, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be down with blacks, so I'm not saying that we shouldn't be down with Mexicans, uh, but you know, we we got to focus on our own stuff first, right? So I'm pretty sure you've heard that, right? You know, people who I've seen the conversations on your page where, like, you know, someone will say that they're down, but then they'll start talking all this and generalizations about Africans or about Mexicans and stuff like that. Uh, uh, but 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 central to uh, uh, African internationalism is a couple things, right? Uh, no borders, right? We don't believe in colonial borders. So, so all African people are African. There's no African Americans. There's no Nigerians. There's no Indians. Uh, 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 those are false uh, political borders. Uh, all African people are Africans. Uh, 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 and 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 with the material basis of the world, uh, that's how we understand. A solidarity through through materialist struggle. So the materialist struggle that that we're fighting for, you know, it, so so it doesn't have to be uh, this silly ass debate about if black people are Aboriginal to the U.S. or something like that, or who came before Columbus and stuff. I mean, that stuff is crucial. Look, if you're teaching your kids that, that stuff is cool. Uh, but 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 you know, if you're in your thirties, your forties, your late twenties, um, hopefully you have sort of understood that. African and indigenous people had civilization that was above European civilization before the point of colonialism. But now we got to wrestle materially with the last uh, 500 to 600 years of world history, uh, 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 in which, uh, in which, in which, uh, sort of the growth of imperialism uh, spurred the oppression of, of of indigenous and colonized people um, around the around the U.S. So I'm mean, sorry around the world. So 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 yeah. Um, so so the African People's Socialist Party uh, began in 1972. Uh, before that, it was there was a couple of different organizations. The the leading organization was a group called the Junta of Militant Organizations. Um, that's where uh, the Chairman O'Malley Estatella was uh, the leader of. And then in 1972, they merged with some other organizations, became the African People's Socialist Party. Um, uh, 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 there's a lot of different organizations that sort of have fall had fell underneath them at that time. Yeah, it was called the African National Reparations Organization, which really uh, made reparations a household name uh, in black political struggle. It added an actual political organization uh, 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 to, 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 to the call for reparations, uh, uh, unlike had been done before. Uh, the African National Prison Organization, which had organized people that were incarcerated and people that weren't incarcerated in the struggle to overturn uh, things. Uh, in 1976, we are, uh, 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 the chairman and the party organized a white solidarity movement called the African People's Solidarity Committee, uh, 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 which is uh, an organization of white North Americans in solidarity 
with African African liberation as as an organization and as members, they pay reparations uh, 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 to to build up the African nation. Um, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, they are. I mean, it's, it's if I've come to really understand them as the bravest group of of white North Americans, uh, uh, because you know having been a part of other uh, socialist formations and things like that. I mean, these are all good people and stuff like that, but like uh, 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 they still have, just like race nationalists have a reductive analysis of race and stuff like that, uh, which oftentimes end up with the African working class at the beck and call of, 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 of African petty bourgeois forces, you know, and stuff like that. Um, uh, 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 the sort of uh, reductive sort of uh, socialist analysis always ends up having African people uh, 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 submitted to a white socialist. And because they're better than the liberals or better than the conservatives, uh, it's tolerated. But instead, sort of, um, uh, 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 you know, you know, who are you going to trust to put out the fire? A person who sort of is looking at the fire and, and, and giving you the analysis but haven't really lived through it or the people who 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 who, 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 who are in the fire burning you know the african people indigenous people of the world are the people in the middle of the struggle we're the we're the working class we're the people on which the white work even the wealth of the white working class was built we already looked at those numbers right Hundred and thirty thousand uh uh for, for for white north americans and nine ninety five hundred dollars of wealth uh, for 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 Black North Americans, uh, you, you have to be a Black person with a college degree. Uh, actually, a, a postgraduate college degree to finally move beyond the, the 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 wealth that a white person who graduates from high school has in the United States. Uh, African women and Mexican women in the U.S. Uh, make less than a white man who dropped out of high school. You know, so so this is the situation we're talking about. I mean, uh, uh, the African and Mexican women make probably an average of 60 cents on a dollar that a white man makes. The white women, whenever they say that 77 cents of a dollar woman, they, they, they throw in black and brown women into the white women category. They don't want to tell you the white women make well over 80 cents, right? Uh, uh, so, so is that good? No, right? Everyone should be equal. But if a white man is making a dollar and a black woman is making 85 cents, a white woman is making 85 cents, uh, the black woman is 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 raising her kids on her own with sixty cents. That's that means that a white family got three times the income of a of a of a black woman, right? Uh, uh, but but the important thing too is that black men and brown men only make about one to two cents on the dollar above. So 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 the thing is, uh, this lets us know that like this analysis that people are working through, uh, it, it's not going to get black people free. It might position some people, maybe middle class people uh, that are African or Mexican indigenous, uh, uh, a little bit better uh, in, in the system, but it's a burning house, right? You know, it might position them a little bit better uh, 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 in this burning house, but but I mean, you know, you know, people make these analyses of gen gender and stuff like that, which have black people, black men in the same category as white men. Like it don't even make any sense. And then it has black women in the same category. So, so African internationalism doesn't do that. Uh, uh, we, 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 African internationalism believes there's no group of people uh, 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 more oppressed than black and uh, indigenous women. You know, we, we know that for a fact, uh, 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 you know, my organization uh, is overwhelmingly led by uh, 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 African women, um, but 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 we know that we need uh, the unity of African people and the unity of the African working class, um, and that's not going to be done by you know, Elizabeth Warren politics or some nonsense like that. No, definitely not. Uh, uh, yeah, I just think that um, no, you, you you said you said what need to be said on that. Um, so so what what's the next step? What 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 do, what what should people watching this do? What uh, if you're if you're there, you know if there's something wrong? Oh, 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 oh okay. So so African People Socialist Party. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 1991 African People Socialist Party. I think I said it earlier. Created Impedum. Uh, 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 Impedum is the mass organization 
uh, uh, of the Uhuru movement, open to membership from of African people and colonized people. Uh, 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 if you're white and you want to support Impedum, uh, I would say uh, go and become a sustaining member of Impedum, but but go and also join what's called Uhuru Solidarity Movement, USM. So that's the mass organization uh, uh, underneath the leadership of the African People Solidarity Committee. Uh, so that's going to be the organization for for white North Americans uh, uh, and stuff like that. So so um like a, 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 a in solidarity and, and you know it's like it's, it's very hard you know for for uh, white North Americans to to to, to follow leadership and uh, take orders from from even 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 the radical ones. I mean you know it's very hard you know uh, uh, so. So, so to have that level of political discipline is crucial. And the other thing is sort of like you got to show material support because you know you you know you beyond liking a post or saying Black Lives Matter or something like that. But we also say Black Lives won't matter until Black Power matters. So, so, um, so, 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 I would say that those people should go and and and, and join, because you know support, give a donation to impede them. But if you want to organize within the movement. Uh, organized uh, as a part of a whole solidarity, and that separates African internationalism, right? We, and like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a theory that explains the world and our position in it. Uh, uh, it's not race nationalism, right? Uh, to understand a sort of division of labor is not oppressive, especially when we're talking about, you know, six hundred years through which uh, white, white Europeans uh, have been able to run everything, you know. So I think I think um, yeah I mean definitely yeah I, I completely agree with you about some things you said earlier I wanted to just touch on that as the you know okay. when you when you deal with in, in these larger socialist organizations wherein um, there's the idea that we need to to move beyond the way they frame it we need to move beyond racism into class consciousness right um, right 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 because 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 racial consciousness they say is a form of uh, what they call it uh, false false, false. consciousness. Yeah, it was false consciousness, false. petty bourgeois, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and when they do that, what it, what often ends up happening is you just end up. It, it's it's deeply ahistorical, is what it is. From I mean, there's there's reasons why it's so offensive and you get mad and angry, but but just intellectually, it's very ahistorical because you're talking about this idea of like a class that's just kind of floating in space, the proletariat on the moon or something like that. Like, why are Europeans? That was on the WB, right? Yeah. <laughs> Proletarians on the moon, yeah. Like, why the working class on the moon, right? Why are Europeans here? Why is it that, you know, the native community has been slaughtered? Why is it that, you know, all these things, all these things that are not simply cultural, they're definitely not cultural questions. All these things are not just simply the you know historical questions. These are economic. These are political. This is like the position of people is economic and political. Um, that has to be pushed away because it's quote unquote divisive and it's right, 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 right. That's divisive. But I mean, what's more divisive than I mean, division is going to happen. I mean, capitalism has divided people. What's more divisive than su su suggesting that there might be an international struggle through which some people will die? But it's like so you so y'all cool with saying that, but y'all not cool with saying that like. You know what I'm saying? Like national distinctions uh, uh, matter. Uh, uh, well, the one thing I like to say is that, like, if 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 I like to believe that if Marx, Engels, Lenin were alive right now, they would unite with African internationalism. Uh, 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 so, so 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 there's the possessive Marxist ideas that I separate my in my own analysis from Marxist ideas, right? Uh, I, th I think Marx's primary concern was with organizing uh, 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 white industrial workers in, in Europe, largely England, right? But the contradiction is that those people were being exploited because they were uh, working on top of the exploitation of, 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 of um, uh, 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 they were working on top of the exploitation of, 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 of of African and indigenous people. I mean, Marx talks about it in Capital, right? Where he talks about Africa being turned into a game reserve for the hunting of black hides. So we know that he understood this stuff. 
uh, 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 but the problem is that, um, and, and this is what the chairman shows, uh, and this is what also, uh, yes, this is what, what the chairman shows is that like, you know, Marx was the product of, of, of bourgeois European society. Uh, so, so he was trying to produce an ideology to change the world, but, but, but it can't come from him. You know, uh, Ingalls' dad owned sweatshops. Yeah. And, 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 and the dough that Ingalls got from that, he was thrown into the struggle, but that's clearly a contradiction that doesn't, uh, 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 prom- that, that doesn't allow for you to be the leader in revolutionary struggle. If anything, that, uh, that means that you should sort of uh, be supportive and follow the leadership of the masses. Um, so so uh, Marx talks about the sort of, uh, the, the sort of, for lack of a better term, um, necessary evil of, of, um, of primitive accumulation because it sort of produced industrialization and the working class. And from that, you know, the working class is going to overthrow capitalism and the struggle and stuff like that. But uh, the chairman, O'Malley S. Tellers, makes it plain. Africans are primitive accumulation, right? The colonized people of the world are political accumulation. Uh, uh, in, in an essay I wrote for another book uh, called Black August, um, uh, and, and, and following off of the words of the chairman, um, uh, 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 I make the point that uh, when we look at uh, the end of the Civil War, the top capital, the number one capital uh, 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 produced from the Civil War uh, was African lives, right? There was nothing that was more profitable. I mean, I've done the number, there's four million people, right? Four million people that were enslaved. Uh, even if you say that, say that the average of them is worth uh, 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 $500, right? And we know there's probably more than that, but $500, 1860 money, right? $500, 1860 money uh, 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 back then alone, just then uh, would have been uh, uh, $2 billion, right? So $2 billion uh, nowadays, you, you know, they got a calculator where you can go online and so, so I'll pull it up right now. Uh, uh, so, 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 uh, 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 you go to inflation calculator, you, you, uh, uh, you put in uh, uh, $2 billion. See, I don't. I ain't never seen no money like that, so I don't even know how many zeros it is. Was it zeros? Uh, hey, mom, please. Mom, please. All right. So, 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 two billion dollars, uh, 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 according to inflation, uh, uh, is going to be one, two, uh, three. Uh, uh, it's going to be. Uh, anywhere between sixty billion and actually uh, two trillion dollars, right? So, yeah. so, so, so. I mean, we talking about uh, ridiculous money. Um, yeah. uh, uh, that was the that was the value on African lives, right? Uh, uh, um, uh, that was the value on African lives. We not talking about. Um, uh, uh, what's that? We're not talking about um, uh, cotton, sugar, tobacco, none of that. The Africans was was were, were, were what was the highest wealth. And then we talk about the land, right? Well, who the land come from? Land came from the Mexican indigenous people, right? So, so that was the wealth. Uh, 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 that so so that's why you know our Af- shoot, a whole lot of people are oppressed underneath capitalism. That's not the question, right? The question is. Uh, 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 who's in the position to lead, right? Where the leadership in that struggle is going to come from, uh, 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 and 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 yeah, I mean, I mean, shoot, even in the Bolshevik party, the people that really led the Bolshevik party came from the edges of the Russian Empire, yeah, you know what I mean? It, it was, you know, these are people that was Jews, people that was uh, uh, Kazakhs, and all sorts of stuff like that, you know, so 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 it wasn't. 
you know, uh, you know, so, so, so that, these are the people who, you know, what's his name was from Georgia, you know, so, so even in the most, even in the revolutionary party that we know had done some, 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 some revolutionary stuff, uh, we talking about, uh, 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 the people who come from the, the most oppressed, uh, and, I mean, those who are huh? most capable, those who are most capable of accessing national chauvinism are, are going to be the least able to reject it i mean those, those are the most right. of grabbing a hold of i am better than other people for this reason are going to have the most have the longest road to go towards the idea that we should all live you know good i mean <laughs> yeah 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 exactly exactly and then they want to push stuff to the side like i said i mean you know you get around some petty bourgeois types when they're talking about gender even in, in African and Mexican uh, spaces, and then they always want to push stuff to the side. Well, we got to sideline that for the greater good. Well, that's that's not African internationalist politics, right? Uh, we, we need to heighten those people, raise those contradictions, raise the 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 the, the women, uh, uh, the the sisters up, the the the, the gender nonconforming people up. I mean, you know, if you go back to to the guidelines for a member of even before the APSP, I told you there was Jomo. You go back to the, they got the Burn and Spear archive. You can go to University of Florida Digital Collections uh, website uh, and look at the Burning Spear newspapers going all the way back to 1969. And uh, even when it was the group Jomo, which meant Burning Spear in, uh, in Swahili, um, it was, uh, it was, it was women. It, 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 the, the, one of the rules was, you know, uh, you don't oppress anybody for, uh, for because of their sexuality. Um, uh, and, and and now I mean the party has has one of them uh, has has the most advanced position on 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 gender identity uh, uh, and sexuality uh, 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 and, and sexual preference and stuff like that. You know, I mean it's, it's been funneled through uh, African internationalist perspective. So so we use the term. Uh, um, uh, 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 of like, like like same gender loving and stuff like that, uh, but we understand that sort of a same gender loving a tradition goes all the way back to pre-colonial Africa. One of the things that I like to tell people is that like you didn't you know you know you got the real petty bourgeois pan Africanist types who say you know African homosexuality is not form native to Africa. Homosexuality is not native to Africa, and then they'll start playing like little word games because that's the type of stuff they do. They, they they'll say things like, "Well, show me where it says homosexuality." In in, in 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 this in this Egyptian uh, hieroglyph or something like that, I'm like it doesn't like, but because um, that's a word that was created like in the last 50, 60 years. But there's hieroglyphs of men kissing each other. Oh no, those guys were were Siamese twins. What connected at the lips? That don't even make no sense. I don't even make no sense. You know what I mean? But so so what you actually learned was was the hate for non gender conforming people, uh, uh, the hate for same gender loving people. From colonialism, is it, it, as opposed to the opposite. You know, uh, uh, does that mean that things were harmonious? No, but does that thing? But by by even the lens of the colonizing forces in Africa, Africa was more progressive on the question of gender and sexuality than colonial Europe or yeah. the colonial Middle East. Well, I really think that this, this question of um, misogyny and homophobia. Um, that the, the, they're horrible. It's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing to make people feel, you know, it's a, ter it's a terrible thing. And in, in the way that the society is organized for, you know, the patriarchal male right, you know, birthright and inheritance, it, it, you know, it's terrible. But particularly in this era, this COVID era, right? I think this connects back to this conspiratorialism, this conspiratorial buffet. Because when we see it in in the colonized, you know, community, it's almost always goes back to this idea that. The government is trying to destroy our nuclear family. The government is always trying to destroy the, the, the natural role that men should be playing. The government is trying to attack, you know, the man as the natural leader. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what? always comes back to that, whether you see it in, in both black and black. I mean, it's not, it's not like particular to black. I mean, this is and, 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 and the thing is, it's hegemonic. It's hegemonic. You know, it's, it's, uh, is um is the thing is that it's it's, it's hegemonic uh, uh so 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 we sometimes even see say like you know 
a, a sister could promote these ideas, right? You know, uh, a white power don't have to, it ain't just a lie because white people support it. There's white people clearly in opposition to the to white power, uh, 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 but you got neo-colonial leaders uh, uh, who support it, right? So, so yeah, I mean, yeah, this is why the solution is we just need to put the black man back in power or the black man in this. I mean, it, it, like, like that is um, that that is 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 is, is correct. That that's correct, cause cause even yeah yeah yeah, because I, I, I remember when the numbers were showing first that it was killing more men than women, you know, uh, uh, that was the creep in, you know, you know, you know, like you said, this is a way to just e e like 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 get black men out the household or something like that. I mean, sort of. I don't know. It's it's like the point of analysis is wrong. Some of the stuff is true, but but that's the problem with all the conspiracy theories. You know, it's like. It's, it's like, yes, yes, industrialization made a collapse in the black family, right? But the salute, but it's not like, 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 but Umar Johnson will tell you, okay, see, that's why we got to, you know, smash on women's rights at the moment that the black woman wanted to be independent and wanted to be like the white woman, yeah, that's right. the black family fell apart. It's like, at, like, like, go watch. Uh, What's that thing? The, the 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 bastards of the party. Mike Davis and bastards of the party uh, 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 says that we could pinpoint the exact moment through which black family dynamics begin to differ. Because uh, coming out of slavery, we know that the number one thing Africans was already doing was family reunification. Uh, you have people arguing that they deserve more than one wife because of the fact that like they had been in, married to multiple people on different slave plantations and it was by no means of their own and stuff like that so so, so so they wanted to hold all their family together uh yeah so 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 yeah so so so, so they wanted to hold um uh uh all of their family together um uh um uh uh, uh yeah yeah so so um so 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 yeah so so we know black people value family i mean uh that that's that's uh, you know we value family so much you don't have to be blood relative to be family oh this is my cousin this this is my cousin and this this is my play sister this is my play auntie all this other stuff and then people are like well how actually is that person your cousin why well, am i like, well actually he's the cousin of my cousin it's cousin but but you know we went to church together and we ate yeah. and you know you know we always spent our time together and stuff like that you know yeah, so, yeah. so that is that is uh, uh that, that that's our politics. So we're approaching hour forty, so we should probably wrap it up. But um, but yeah, yeah, wrap, yeah, yeah. wrap it up, B. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. We do have a question here though, so let's 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 look at the question. Yeah, so yeah, uh, uh exactly, Marquis. So shout out to my cousin and my cousin. Uh, <laughs> no, you, I'll be talking about you when I say that, Marquise. Is uh, is because 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 me and Marquise, I mean, we might as well be brothers. And people will see us, they'll be like, Yeah, you know, you met Marquise before, Matt, uh, uh, uh up there at the Hair Tubman Center. Uh, okay, okay. no, 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 not at the Hair Tubman Center, uh, 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 at the conference last, 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 last spring. But yeah, my, my cousin Marquise will be, uh, you know, people will be like, You know, y'all even look alike. Y'all even looking like, I mean, I know what you mean when we say we look alike, you know, I'm like, well, actually he's my cousin's cousin, but he's my cousin, you know, uh, 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 exactly, exactly. Don't even cross our mind that we're not blood. That like, cause, cause, cause that is the whole sanguino relationship. That's colonial. That's about who going to get this property, you know, you, you know, you, you, like, 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 like who going to get this dowry, all this other colonial nonsense. It's not about sort of building family and political connections. So the question, are you going to the question about uh, Af internationalism? This question right here is, oh, did you, did you see another one? I see this one here, in the realm of difference of identity, which takes precedence in the speaker? Okay, but where's the African internationalism question? Oh, by Daniel. Uh, Daniel, uh, uh, Daniel uh, shout out to Daniel, because Daniel has been posting all the links as we've been talking. Yeah, 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 shout out to Daniel. You know, you, 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 uh, that, that you're a real comrade. Uh, where do they fit in within Pan-Africanism international? So he's, he's naming uh, a lot of um, these uh, well-known. Right, so, um, uh, I mean, the, the, there's people that we hold up in the in the trajectory of of, of African internationalism. 
Uh, we know that the, the theory of African internationalism was shaped through uh, 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 the struggle and the growth of the African People's Socialist Party. Um, uh, however, um, you know, uh, we lift up the Marcus Garvey, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, uh, Malcolm X. We hold up uh, 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 Dr. King and Dr. King's legacy because of the struggle and the willing to liberate his people, but also because of Dr. King, uh, you know, critical to African internationalism is idea of critic criticism and self-criticism, right? Uh, uh, growth through sort of a, like like dialectical materialist struggle. And, and, and that's what Dr. King really represents. We know he caught the slug because he sort of came out against the Vietnam War uh, 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 because Dr. King was was a um a a uh uh, uh he, he you know he began to present african internationalist analysis he he said that you know um uh uh uh, uh he feared that um he had uh uh, uh 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 led his people towards integrating a burning house you know so 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 dr king um we hold up dr king i don't you know i wouldn't uh, but uh we hold up his legacy um uh 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 the voice the voice is a lot more problematic uh because um uh because of the work that his uh pan african congress did uh, uh really to undercut garvey uh uh to the extent of siding with the uh united states government and stuff like that um and things like that so so i mean i wouldn't put him in the tradition of african internationalism um uh, but but I mean, if you're in academia, you know, uh, you're gonna read the voice and the voices work and stuff like that. But but uh, but yeah, um, you know, uh, the first and foremost, uh, and also the the voice basically uh, helped produce this like like a black belt South thesis. And what separates Af African internationalism from another thing like New Africanism uh, is is New Africanism. Uh, you know, they, they, it's based on a theory that Africans in the U.S. developed to a different nation of people, and therefore our native homeland or whatever is five states in the American Southeast or something like that, you know, uh, 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 and that's where we need to be looking at. But I mean, that ain't, I mean, that's, that's the Southeastern nations, <laughs> that's indigenous land. So, so we hold clearly, I mean, we hold clearly to sort of the international solidarity uh, uh with 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 indigenous people um here within the united states uh and 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 north america and the america so i mean uh, the idea that like their homeland should be given to us you know that's that settler colonial uh in the 1980s it was i've seen people in the movement refer to it as new zionism or neo-zionism right so it's neo-zionist to suggest that uh, and, and then that was so. So we're going to relinquish uh, Africa and the liberation of Africa to, to 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 imperialist powers or something like that, or to think because we were enslaved, uh, we're different than people in Africa. Uh, that's not our position. So 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 uh, so, and that that's the new Africanist position. It's very popular, uh, and it's got multiple manifestations of it uh, nowadays. But 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 we we don't subscribe to new Africanism. We don't refer to black people as new Africans. We refer to all black people as African people and Africa is our homeland and but it's but we believe in the liberation the tearing down of colonial borders and then eventually once you tear down those colonial borders you tear down all colonial borders so sort of at the end of the way it's embracing of African nationalist uh, identity um, African internationalism is, is going to be the step towards uh, uh, liberating all people uh, uh, so 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 yeah so so, so that's that, that. That's what we look back towards. Um, uh, are we at the shameless plug part? Or the shameless plugs? Let's let's, uh, let's uh, let people know what they need to follow up and, and. All right. So, so first and foremost, um, I know we sort of veered away, but but the reason we're here in our home talking to each other right now uh, is because of this COVID nineteen crisis. It's important to note that the uh, horror movement declares it uh, that the. Uh, 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 that the coronavirus is a colonial virus. Uh, 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 we wage what's called the People's War Against COVID-19. Um, if you go to uh, theburningspear.com, you can get a lot of articles that were 
writing about it, but also go to developmentforafrica.org. Developmentforafrica.org. That is the uh, website for the All African People's Democratic, so All African People's Development and Empowerment Project. Uh, 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 and, and and they are the, the head of a coalition of, 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 of African of uh, first responders uh, that 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 we're assembling, and it's an emergency aid organization called the Black Ankh. You know, so support the Black Ankh, not the Red Cross. If you have a skill, if you are African or an Indigenous colonized person, um, uh, uh, what I would ask for you all to do is to. Uh, go and join the Black Ankh and give you uh, African or Indigenous colonized person. You work in healthcare, so you're talking about like 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 uh, 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 any form of wellness, even mental wellness. Go and join Project Black Ankh. Give your skills back towards us as we fight this war, uh, uh, because we know that the government does not have our our, our best interests uh, uh, in mind. Um, uh, go to um, uh, what's called the burning spe burning spear marketplace.com. I think it's just burning spear marketplace, uh, not a burning spear marketplace. Burning, okay, yeah. Uh, so, 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 go to burning spear marketplace.com. Uh, 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 get a uh, uh, click on the books, uh, um, uh, 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 get some recent books. Uh, Vanguard, the advanced attachment of the African Revolution. An uneasy equilibrium, the African Revolution versus parasitic capitalism, uh, 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 by Chairman O'Malley Ashtetela. Uh, subscribe to the paper uh, for twelve dollars a year. Uh, 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 you get a year's subscription, mail it directly to your house. You can become a sustainer. You can become a distributor uh, of the paper as well if you have a store, a storefront. Um, uh, and at the very least, read the articles and share the articles. Okay. Cool. Next. Excellent. Right, cool. Thank you, man. Thank you. Like I said, I, I could I could talk all day long. So, um, well, thanks for having me, and uh, or thanks for me coming on, and uh, and we will yeah. we'll do this again. Oh, cool. Thanks a lot. All right. All right. Over.